So my dear friends, I am very happy to be once again with you and to speak to you, especially what's going on in our Archdiocese, the different programs, the different activities at the same time that God is blessing us in many ways. Let me start with the message of the week. We have once again a beautiful message, perhaps long forgotten or sometimes not stressed, not even acknowledged by many. You know, every program that we attend, at the end of it is called the Word of Thanks. The Word of Thanks. And normally the words like gratitude is the attitude of the heart. So many words we say. And in English language, the word thanks, thank you, is so common that we say it for anything and for everything, perhaps, but we don't mean it. So today's Gospels brings out that aspect of our life, what's called gratitude in our life. Thanking God and thanking the others also in our life. We see in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 17, verse 11 onwards, the beautiful incident in Jesus' life where he cures 10 lepers. You know, leprosy is a serious disease and that time it was one of the worst frightful diseases because leprosy was considered as good as a man ostracized and thrown out of the society even if he was his own family member. There was no cure. The person lived apart. The person lived by himself and many a time like an animal. Like an animal. And so this particular incident in the life of Jesus where ten lepers they don't come close, they are far away. And when they see Jesus passing by, they shout, they ask for his mercy, for his cure. And Jesus goes a little closer to them. And he says to them, in order to be cured, please go and do whatever you are pleased or perhaps your elders tell you. And it so happens that all of them are cured. All of them are cured. And the main thrust of this incident is not all of them come to thank the Lord. In fact, nine of them don't come. Just one comes and he happens to be of another community that is a discarded, marginalized community among the Jews called the Samaritans. It's as good as to say that my enemy or person who is not being considered as an equal comes to thank Jesus, but those that deserved just take it for granted. So therefore this, the message of today is gratitude. Gratitude to God, gratitude to the persons in our life. As I said, many of us take this gratitude or thanking for granted. Granted, and especially in our family life, among the couples, among friends, we don't think it's important to thank or to acknowledge each other. There are three reasons why we should be grateful. First of all, gratitude is for something that I was not expecting. Perhaps I was not even deserving. I, have, I want something. I need something. But then I just can't force myself and say, I want it. But then someone gratuitously or freely gives it to me. As I said, I was not deserving it. So therefore to be aware that in spite of my not deserving it, God is giving me, or perhaps God is giving me through someone in my family, among my friends. And secondly, to say that God is great. God doesn't keep account of the good things that he does. There's that beautiful saying which says, God gives and forgives. Man gets and forgets. God is always gracious. He doesn't do good to only those who are good. That beautiful saying in the Gospel which says that the sun shines on all the people, even those who are not good. And therefore God's gift is for all and God is gracious, God is great. And thirdly, that gratitude also awakens in us certain feelings that we also have to reach out to the others. 
if god has given me graciously if god has given me i would say even without my expecting it perhaps i can become an instrument of charity instrument of generosity for those that come in front of me that those who come before me so therefore for these three reasons we have to be grateful so my dear brothers and sisters first of all be grateful to god in your life god has given you so many things perhaps god has given you life god has given you a marriage god has given you a family god has given you a house a children a work so many things be grateful to god and secondly be grateful to each other grateful to each other the husbands to be grateful to their wives the wives to always say that ultimately my husband has done something to me holy father pope francis said there are three things that we should never take for granted parts we should keep repeating in our families the first one is thank you thank you to say thank you and secondly to say please please and the third sorry but today i stress much more thank you in your life let us thank the lord and also thank each other in your family among others in your office the other people perhaps who have done to you let us always be grateful i now pass on to what we have referred last month is called the mission month october month has got two big capital m's one is mother mary second is the mission and these two go together beautifully on 7th of october we celebrate the feast of our lady of the rosary and in the 13th once again we will be celebrating one of the apparitions of mother mary in fatima as the second m i said is mission in october month we have the what's called the mission awareness days the mission sunday and so in our rash diocese i have told last time we will be concentrating on two activities one is called the mission hour in the churches not on perhaps not in all the churches but there are some churches who have offered themselves to pray very specially for the missions in their church on a particular day in october it would be from 7 to 8 o'clock in the evening reading with preaching on the mission and also perhaps the blessed sacrament exposed and benediction the mission hour besides as many people are so much glued or perhaps used to the mobiles to the tv to the media we have also a 15 minute 15 minute clip every day on a mission experience on the missionaries there are so many congregations in bangalore who are working in the far away missions in africa in americas in the australia in so many other things and therefore we also show a little of the mission mission world and missionaries on the youtube on the advertisers and media channels for 15 minutes and surely i am sure you will watch it perhaps you will store it pass it on to your friends and and to appreciate the work of our missionaries and the work done in the missions thirdly i also make a small reminder which i have said also the others we have formed in most of the parishes the archdiocese what's called the parish pastoral councils and parish finance committees these are both sort of a a set up by which we pa- ask the participation of the people in the governance of the local church our parish is small we don't have that much of perhaps people but then the few representatives from among the people can decide certain things about the parish the masses the timings of associations the activities the programs the celebrations the feast this is what the parish council does and they once they are elected and form part of the parish council of the church so also the parish finance committee bothers itself regarding the finances how to raise the finances for the church and also how to spend it as much as we can raise we can also spend it by spend for the needs of the church for the altar for the people and also not forgetting the poor people in the parish for them also perhaps we can make a collection or perhaps we can think of uh, having ways and means of reaching out to them and so in order to 
in order to initiate the members of the parish council parish finance committee because many of them are new they may not be knowing what are the expectations of the church about them at the same time what is their responsibility what are their duties we have kept a seminar we have one seminar a little a few months ago and there's another one is going to be this sunday that's 9th of october in st peter's seminary where the professors and our own priests are also there they will tell you about the parish council parish finance committee and so kindly those who have not attended this course anywhere else it's better that you sacrifice one day go for this seminar the parish council members the parish priest have been requested to send your names earlier so that they can make provisions they can make arrangement for you and it's from 9:30 in the morning till about 4:30 in the evening and sure it will be a nice to interchange and exchange of views on who the priest the experts and also among yourself and i also will be there with you in the afternoon i will be celebrating the eucharist and interacting with you in some way so kindly attend this parish council and parish finance committee seminar that is being conducted in st peter's seminary maleshwaram on sunday that's today and uh, from 9:30 to 4:30 pm there's something called f a b c it's a big word federation of asian bishops conferences asia we have heard of the bishops committees bishops conferences in india here we call it cbci we call it ccbi and when i say about fabc it's an asian conferences put together and the fabc is celebrating 50 years of its existence in asia like in india we have the other church of sri lanka pakistan the koreans the vietnamese the japanese the chinese and so many other asian nations put together with their conferences the conference leaders that they come together and this year is the 50th year in 1972 pope paul the 6th in manila he inaugurated it and he said the asians have a, a sort of a homogeneous culture a oriental culture a special perhaps belong sense of belonging among the people and also the gifts of sharing the uh, the qualities of coming together our culture our traditions together and so the pope all the six encouraged the asian bishops and therefore this fabc federation of asian bishop conferences come together to celebrate the jubilee the golden jubilee as also to see how perhaps they can work together we can go forward and this celebration or this perhaps assembly is going to take place in bangkok from the 12th of october till the 31st of october and therefore we pray for them and surely we are viewing this clip on the on the media on the channels today to see what is happening in this fabc The Mission Sunday this year comes on the 23rd of October. I like Bangalore especially because our people in Bangalore have a heart for the poor, a heart for the missions. The way our priests are sort of organized their parishes, the announcements they make and it's like a festive festive season to contribute to the missions. We may not be able to go to the missions. We have some little missions here. We have our priests, young priests who have gone to the missions last year and this year also. There are some of them in missions in North India, in the North Karnataka, and we have also many mission congregations who are serving in the missions in the different parts of the world, especially where Christianity is very sparse. And therefore, we pray for the missions, celebrate the day of the missions, twenty third of October. and so in your parish also when the parish priest encourages you to come together to contribute to the missions perhaps certain festivities that are conducted some parishes have the stalls some parishes have small lotteries some games and all to collect happily some 
support for the missions please participate in it and make it a success i must also wish our hindu brothers and sisters happy dasara you know the dasara festival is still going on and the dasara festival dasara is also called vijay dashmi which is a 10 day festival or rather 9 day of preparations for them with navaratri at night with all the music and dance with the happiness and the basic tenet of dasara is victory of good over evil we join our hindu brothers and sisters in the celebration of the feast because we also have our feast and there are many hindus and muslims who participate in our festivals you know christmas is a universal feast and so in this in this climate of interreligious communion together harmony together we also wish our hindu and muslim brothers during their festivals and i am happy to extend them on behalf of the arch diocese uh, blessings of god on all of them as they celebrate the feast of dasara so my dear brothers and sisters we have two beautiful questions here i somehow like the questions that the people ask because these questions are also not only inquisitive but give a lot of information So the first question is are we supposed to use musical instruments in church if so what are the instruments that can be used the second question is what is the purpose of church bylaws can these be made available to the parishioners let me start with the musical instruments here are the musical instruments needed at all can't we do without them or is it a uh, fashion that we have instruments perhaps it goes back to the music you know music is something so soothing to the eyes music in fact has no language any persons of any caste any creed any religion any country they love music without our eastern music was different western music was different but nowadays there are so many our sitar our uh, maestros coming together along with the beatles along with the others and celebrating the music together the question is about instruments do we need instruments in church music i would say yes which are the instruments and how are the instruments to be played first of all the music or the choir in the church is that bit accompanies the people one who prays in st augustine he says one who sings sings Augustine says praise twice praise twice once the words and other times to his voice and to his being and if the instruments are necessary in order to accompany the singing you need a tune you need a tone you need the beat you need the parts the music in some way so therefore we have to be careful to see what instruments are used the instruments are not for distraction the instruments are not for just for ear noise the instrument can should not drown the voice the noise should not drown the voice and therefore the voice has to be louder therefore the music has to be in consonance with the words or perhaps with the singing so that they accompany them they accompany them so therefore the church encourages certain instruments that are useful for example the organ has always been a traditional instrument of the church for church music we used to hear of what's called the pipe organ the pipe organ the organ that is played with loud noise of course with a loud voice and volume but then it used to fill the whole atmosphere of the church and give that divine atmosphere so nowadays perhaps what we have what's called the casio that's also recommended that can accompany them there are sometimes who some who play guitars and accompany them and all of these to say that the voice is accompanied by the music it's not the other about the music is louder and the voice is smaller no it's always the music that is accompanies the voice and the singing as such what about the other instruments i would say that perhaps sometimes the instruments can be a cause of disturbance a distraction also but the church also tolerates certain instruments of certain traditions or certain communities 
For example, I don't know whether you've heard the Northeast people have a beautiful bamboo type of bugles, which they beautifully sing when used in their in their programs, in their liturgies, and it is not disturbing. It's very nice. So therefore, according to the customs of the people, also we can use, but then surely not to disturb and distract. Uh, secondly, what are the purposes of church by laws? Can this be made available to the parishioners? First of all, the church has a main law book, it's called the canon law. The canon law. And the canon law book that has been prepared at a say in 1981, 80s or so, that is still there with certain additions and perhaps certain insertions from time to time. Perhaps they will bring out a new edition with these insertions also, but this canon law book has got all the matters about church law, about the family, about the sacraments, about marriages, about funeral, about uh, let us say the faith matters, all the matters, governance, even perhaps the judicial matters, the penal or the punishment matters, all these things are put in the church canon law book which perhaps anyone can, perhaps if you are interested, you can ask some of your fathers to give this book which is there and is there. Besides that, the church also passes what's called the supplementary laws. Once in a way, certain laws come from the church to add the main canon law works or the, or the directives that are given there. For example, that uh, the cremation is allowed. Perhaps earlier it was not allowed, but now we allow it. Capital punishment is not good. We have to give a life person and allow him to live as much as he can. So these are small things, of course, which are part in supplementary laws, which can are also available. Besides, every church or every diocese has also got certain what's called the local church laws. For example, in our Rash diocese, we have uh, directives for the diocese and pastoral council. We have directives for the past parish pastoral council. We have directives also for the parish finance committees. We have also a booklet by in which we give directions for the cemeteries. So these are all the local laws, etc., which are applicable for us. And we have um, most of them compiled in small booklets, which are also available. With the priests or perhaps in the diocese also, you can ask them and surely you have every right to know them and to possess also this booklet so that you can also be aware of them and tell each other and ask your priests for these reliefs or these perhaps support that you can get because of these bylaws or the church laws, books, the local church and the universal church. So my dear friends, I wish you well. God bless you in this week and keep you always together in His love. Thank you. As a church, we reflect on propagating the mandate of Christ. More so here in Asia, and this mantle has fallen on the Federation of Asian Bishops' Conferences. The FABC is a voluntary association of Episcopal Conferences in Asia, established by the approval of the Holy See. Its purpose is to foster among its members solidarity and co-responsibility for the welfare of the Church and society in Asia. 2020 marked the 50th anniversary of the FABC, but the unfortunate situation of the pandemic shelved all plans. So let's take a trip down memory lane and relive these moments, not only as a historical event, but also renewing the FABC with the spirit of the founders. The roots of the FABC go back to the Second Vatican Council. It was during the sessions of the Council in Rome that many Asian bishops met for the first time. Most of them realized that until then, they had better relationships with bishops from Europe than with their fellow bishops from Asia. This realization created the need for a structure aimed towards interaction and cooperation among themselves across Asia. Thus, the FABC is the fulfillment of this long-standing dream of the bishops of Asia. 
in 1970 on the occasion of Pope Paul VI's visit to Manila, 180 Asian bishops came together for the first Asian bishops meeting from 23rd to 29th November 1970. The latter part of this meeting was presided over by the Pope himself and it was here the FABC was born. Later in 1971, the Asian bishops assembled in Hong Kong for the first Central Committee meeting in March to pursue a permanent Asian Episcopal structure. On 16th November, the second draft of the statutes was approved at Experimentum for two years by Pope St. Paul VI, the moment when Rome officially recognized the FABC. A third meeting of the Central Committee was convened in Hong Kong between 13th and 15th February 1973. It was the first FABC meeting under the provisionally approved statutes. Over the years, there have been significant contributions to the Universal Church from the Church in Asia. Today we look at the human panorama of Asia, the immense field of our apostolate echoed in the phrase, for all the peoples of Asia. That has been a pledge of the FABC. We grapple with the diversity of Asia, yet we are brought together to be the Asian Church.